Howdy, y'all. Hi, guys. It's Ryan. And Angela. From uh, RNA Music. And SFA. Lumberjacks. <laughs> Your favorite mom and pop guitar shop and lesson studio and talk show. Gurus. Deep, deep in the heart of wherever we are. Mm -hmm. Of all time. It's so bright. I got too much light on my pastiness. You <laughs> I'm pasty. Uh, we are back for our anniversary trip. Yes, we are. It was are. great. You had a good time? Mm -hmm. It was nice. had a nice. good time, too. We had fun. Mm -hmm. And back to the grind. And we're going to answer y'all's questions right now. Right here. Right, mm -hmm. right up in here. Up in here. Let's do it. First question, Cam Deman. Hello, Cam Deman. Hey, RNA. Happy belated anniversary. Thank you. Hope all is well with you. Baby Demand has finally started to roll. Aww. And baby talk a ton. <laughs> That's awesome. My question is, what's one of the main obstacles you've run into when owning and running a small guitar shop? Hashtag KTMA. Oh, man. Late mm. question that came yeah. in just a few hours ago. So you right under the wire, Cam Demand. You made you it. Made it. Uh, way to go, man. Um... That's a really good question. Mike, mm -hmm. what's one of the main obstacles we've run into when owning and running a small guitar shop? Mm. Uh, what do you think, Lala? Um, I'm not sure. Obstacles. I mean, there are so many different categories of obstacles that we kind of have learned through over the years. Um, uh, I think for the most part, I know something that I've learned over the years because I'm, um, I guess in my understanding of when people are kind of, you know, nice to you or, you know, the way they work their business and try to get you to get in with business with them. Um, one obstacle I, I find that, um, you just have to be very careful of who you trust and who you go, you know, you go into business kind of with, not necessarily business with, but because it's your business. Yes, and that's the thing. Is like I think the obstacle was to kind of stand up for ourselves. There was an obstacle of understanding that this is our business, not someone else's business. And so many times um, when you're new, uh, people like to. Um, push the boundaries of what they think they can speak into your life or feel like they can do to you. Um, so I think that that's been a huge obstacle of, is finding out who you can actually trust with um, mentorship and who really has your best interests at heart. Because there's still a lot of people um, that, like in the very beginning, there was an, another guitar store in this area and there were people that were saying ugly things about us. That weren't true. That weren't even true. It was just completely faux, completely, you know, wrong. And um, there have been other companies that we've been in business with that have done the same thing. And I think that's the biggest obstacle because we're very trusting and we are people of our word and compassionate and compassionate and but we're very we're people of our word and honor is big for us so i think the biggest obstacle i think for especially even for him because he is such a people person is to not always put your heart on your sleeve and to um have a little bit of a guard up when it comes to uh, businesses and other people who you think you're on all on the same team but uh, honestly, they are out for themselves and that is it. So I think that was our biggest obstacle. I mean, there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of categories where like, money's concerned and, mm -hmm. you know, finding the right um, algorithm and getting the right, you know, publicity out there. But that's kind of such a very narrow blanket. But I think like the biggest one where it's caused us the most heartache is trusting people who we shouldn't have trusted. That's a good answer. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's my biggest thing because a lot of people, you know, will take advantage of you mm -hmm. if you are giving, if, if you are in it for the love. And some people, honestly, intentionally or non, they're out just kind of just break you because they don't, they see you as a threat. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um, 
I could add all kinds of things to that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, that's a good answer, Angelo Sauce. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to say, um, actually starting with nothing, right? Yeah. Like when we start our, it's it's this Rocktober, I think, mm -hmm. technically, or November. I don't know. Yeah. This coming fall will actually be our real 10 year anniversary. Right. Um, and I find it really interesting when we go places and we, uh, anytime we go to a new town or go somewhere, I want to go check out the local guitar shops, you know, mm -hmm. the independent places, not the big chains and stuff, but like the, you know, the mom and pop shops. And I'm interested to see what, what's their story, how they get started. Right. <clears throat> and there are a lot of places that started off like the, the owner who's usually not there Mm -hmm. is like owns two or three other businesses right and has a, a huge bankroll in. huge amount of cash backing it so yeah they went like hey let's start a guitar store you know and three months later they've got a guitar store stocked with all this stuff or, right or you know 90 days later or whatever mm -hmm. and it's like oh yeah but you, you you get a ton of money from these other businesses oh okay right i get it or you know or someone's got investors partners you you got several different people to invest a couple hundred thousand dollars and Right. You know, I'm like, oh, okay. Now we literally started with like 350 bucks. Like literally started with mm -hmm. nearly nothing. <laughs> and so it's definitely been a grind over the years to, to yes. grow and to stay in business. And, you know, we've made mistakes, you know, like Angela said, it's like, you know, we've partnered with some companies we shouldn't have partnered with probably. And it cost us financially as a, a real mom and pop shop, it's like, we don't have millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars behind us, you know, bankrolling this joint. I mean, it's right. literally, literally started with a couple hundred bucks and built it from there. So, you right. know, <laughs> a $10,000 mistake or $20,000 mistake is a huge thing, but it really is, you know, um, so just, you know, being smart, um, you know, with our finances and being wise and, and not overextending ourselves, uh, you know. But in, in the beginning, it was definitely, you know, being creative. When yes. there, there's no money for budget. Mm -hmm. We can't put an ad in the paper or put an ad. We can't yeah, it was pay. so funny. We'd have kids come in, like the local high schools will come in and it's like, hey, would you like to pay, buy an ad for our program for football season? And we're like, oh, okay, how much is, you know, they're like, you know, like a business card size ad is like $500. I'm like, I'm like yeah. <laughs> would you like to be in our program? Excuse me. $500. Baking powder. Um, no, uh, no, that's dinner. <laughs> And That's I don't a truckload of inventory. Unless you give me like box seats, free season tickets. Am I getting season tickets with this? Oh, I'm not. Then no, girl. What you talking about? No. So can you guarantee us, you know, a threefold return? Right. On this Am I going to get five students from this? Are we going to get five thousand dollars in business from this five hundred dollar advertising revenue? So yeah, having that understanding of, you know when you don't have a lot of money and making that balance and knowing when to sacrifice and know when to say no. So you don't have so much, um, what is it? The overhead Yeah. where, um, you drown, yeah. you know, that's a, that's, it's an obstacle. It's not a hard obstacle. It's just a learning moment that I think everything has yeah. their learning moments. But sure. yeah, we did, st we started out with basically in the world of business, we literally started out with nothing. I mean, yeah, it was 350, A couple hundred bucks to order some strings or something with or. Compared to everything else for what we've done and what we've built. Yeah, we started out with nothing, literally nothing. I wish we'd had $100,000 to start. <laughs> yeah, he or had a dream and I was like, yeah, go for it. Because yeah. we've lived, we've lived on nothing, you know. We've made less than twenty thousand dollars in a year, and we've had to go on <laughs> made food, less than st food stamps before. Year. And we've, we know what it feels like to literally have nothing, and live in a trailer, or you know, live in four hundred square feet, or you know, scrape by. I mean, we were happy, and we were fine with that because we're not, we knew what was really important but um 
another obstacle I would say was getting over what other people was were saying about us mm. in order to achieve our dream. Um, a lot of people felt sorry for us or they just didn't didn't support us. We still have family and friends who have never stepped foot in our our business. Like not a single one. Not even just to say, I want to come by and check out what you've done. Like nobody. So to get past that mentality that, you know, there's not going to be a huge ribbon ceremony and everybody's going to just be, you know, completely supportive. That was a huge obstacle for me. Like, cause like I said, I'm a people person and you know, to know that people don't really have your back that you thought you were going to have your back is tough. Like, I feel like, you know, kind of getting emotional about that. Cause it's, you know, we have, we have really close friends that have never been here and they live in the same town <laughs> as us and we i mean y'all seen canton it's not big. it's not that big you know um so it's it's just getting over that mentality of i don't okay. have to have oh it's not flash off no i said keep going it getting over that mentality of i don't have to have the ideal situation of everybody's approval everybody has my back everybody's going to approve of this everybody's going to think that this is a great idea you know people are going to say ugly things people are going to say negative things people aren't going to believe in you people aren't going to and i know this sounds really like a lot of negative but it is an obstacle an obstacle isn't a positive thing yeah um, something you have to overcome it's you you have to get over that you know and be like you know the people who are going to be there for you are going to be great people and the people who really matter are the ones who will always be there and we've met some amazing people opening up this store people who have traveled miles and miles people from other countries that have supported us and bought our things because they loved us so much and you know you guys it's just been you know getting past those obstacles of what you build it up to be like or what you think starting a business is going to be like you know how television portrays starting a business the little mom and pop shop and every all the walls are stocked and all the things are done and the children want to be a part of the business and you're retiring at that age and you're so happy it's you have to pop that in your brain and you have to be like okay i know it's going to be hard but even though it's hard but because i believe in this vision so much I'm willing to sacrifice. I'm willing to not have a cheering section to see this come to fruition. Um, because I promise you, like I said before, the people who are meant to be in your corner that want to see you succeed will be there. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And that's t that was a tough thing for sure that the people you thought would be like, yeah, great. You can do it. Be your biggest cheerleaders. Oh my gosh. We're not our biggest like, cheerleaders. What? what? It was horrible I you were for a 40. while there. Yeah, like there it were was. Some moments. There were some moments where it brought us both to tears. Where we thought, "Wow, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you were supposed to be our <laughs> biggest cheerleader, and you're not. What is that about? <laughs> I don't understand." Yeah. Um, but again, it was kind of <laughs> like that. Okay, well, oh well, right. you know, we're well, just gonna keep on doing this. It. Not like we're gonna stop and analyze the situation and wonder why. We're gonna be like, okay, peace out, homie. <laughs> we're gonna keep on going. Yeah. So, show. and we have, and we'll be in our. We are in our tenth year, so yeah, we're going strong. For sure. Awesome. Thanks for the question, Cam Demand. Appreciate it, man. Good to hear how Baby Demand is doing. Just wait. <laughs> just oh, it's. You're Take in lots of pictures. You're in for an adventure. You will not man. regret all the pictures. You yeah. will not regret them. You can't have too many pictures of them. You can't. That little, at all. And record. Video as much as you video can. Video them. Um, her. Her. Yeah. I said that last time. It's a girl. Because mm -hmm. there's so many children that have been born around me. I get so lost in who's who. Um, girly, video her. It's girly demand. Yes. Girl, girl demand. Girl demand. <laughs> it's cam to girl. Um video all the little babblings all the cooings and their first word their first sound because it's one thing i tell young moms all the time take this moment to really let that stuff imprint in your head because there'll come a time whenever you will not like your kid <laughs> they will get on your nerves and you'll wonder why 
God, why? And having those little things in your head that you remember how precious they are and you remember those sweet little moments will be so helpful to love them through their stupidity. Yeah, when they make bad choices. <laughs> <laughs> or are rebellious. Oh my God. All right, man. Thank you so much. Next question. Next yeah. question. Just Fun Guitar. New questions. He's They should be getting his package soon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, I mean, through customs. Awesome. New questions. One, if you could stock any brand you do not have right now, and you can pick up only one new brand, what would it be? Two, do you remember all the pets you have ever owned and their names? Oh, man. Okay. Uh, let's see. If I could stock any brand I do not have right now, and I could only pick one, mm -hmm. what would it be? Mm. Man. Anyone that I don't have, if I could only pick one. Is it across the, across the, I guess, instrument line? If you could stock any brand, you don't have right now. If I could, I'm going to put that, if I could, if I had the money right. to do it. Unlimited resources and you could go if right now. If I could now. pick any brand I wanted right now yes. to add. I would, I would, any, any thoughts? Because mm, you don't really care? Mm, <laughs> Guitars? Not necessarily, because I don't know. I would probably... I would probably pick PRS. Mm, okay. Paul Reed Smith. Because I own two PRSs. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan of Paul Reed Smith guitars. I think they're great guitars for the money. I have two very, you know, budget-friendly PRSs that I personally own. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably pick them. Okay. If, if money... We're no object, and I had the resources because right. it's it's a you know it's, it's a little expensive. It's not as bad really as Fender or Gibson necessarily, right. um, but I generally like. I mean, I have two PRSs and I think they're great. And I have friends who have them. I'm like, that's a cool, that's a cool guitar. So right, right. probably of the big three brands out there, I would probably pick PRS. I think. Okay. I think if if we could if we could pull it off financially, I think that's what I would do. Awesome. Pretty sure. Uh, do you remember all the pets you have ever owned and their names, mm -hmm. Angela? I do. Yes, she does. What? What? Do I? I have to name them. Name them all. All. Oh my gosh. Did you name all of them? Okay, I had Bugs Bunny the rabbit. Then we had going through like my. I'm imagining my timeline. Is that weird? Chronologically. Yeah. And then let's see. We had. My sister would probably be like, no, we have blah, 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 blah. Um, because I had pets and they had pets, so. I'm Your pets. Gonna, I'm just going to name all. Your I'm pets. just going to name them as a group because that's how I remember them. Okay. So we have Mrs. Um, we have Bugs Bunny, the, the rabbit, when I was like three years old. And then we had Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the fish. We had fish, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then we had um, Jackie, the Dalmatian. I mean, then we had I've heard Champ. about her. Yeah, she was crazy. She then we had Champ for a little while, and he was like a Spuds McKenzie dog, but he was like a stray. A um, stray Spuds. Yeah, I'm gonna say what's his name, Champ. Yeah, because I think we had two Champs. Because we had another Champ. He was a Chow, like pit mix. Chows are crazy. Yeah, he was he was a cute dog, but yeah, that him we had Miss B. She was a beagle. Woo. And we had Muffy. Woo. She was a Cocker Spaniel. Out from Miss B, we had Mutt and Merle. There were two girls, Mutt and Merle. And then we had, say, Mutt and Merle died. And then we had, um, gosh, Duchess, our boxer. boxer. Our boxer. Because his sister had a My Duchess. My sister and boxer. Had a boxer named Duchess also. Yes. And we had a boxer named Duchess. And I think she was our last, my parents' last dog until they got Scooter. Which is not your dog. Which is not my dog. And then we had Stoney together. So that was 13 before me and you got together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we had... Tone, Tone, Tone. No, we, we, we had... Stoney we had, was We first. had Stoney first. And then we had Duchess's puppy. Oh, Rex. Rex. 
And Rex was a bad dog. <laughs> he just wasn't, he was just enthusiastic. He was just a pup. Yes, he was a lot like Summer. Yeah. And then we had Roxy. We didn't have another animal in our house until we had Roxy. Time. Roxy, then Pepper, then Mesa, then Sarah, then Summer. Well, no, no, we had Ashes, then Sarah, then Ember. Ember's then Sparkle Summer. Cat. So, yeah. yeah. She does. I don't remember all of mine. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't remember. I remember when I was very little, we had uh, a German Shepherd named Summer, mm -hmm. who was completely white, which is why we have the new one, <laughs> Summer. Mm -hmm. She's named after mine that I had when I was a little kid. Yeah. I remember she was great. She was amazing. Mm -hmm. German Shepherd. We had a poodle named Monday, Monday, that we ended up eventually gave to my uncle. And I always thought that was my uncle's and aunt's dog, but no, she was actually ours. Oh. First. Oh, we had Tori. We had Tori. That's we right. We had Tori first before Tori. Roxy. Um, and then we had quite a few cats because I grew up on a farm and I could not, I could not even begin to tell you how yeah. many there were. We had cats, their but names. they weren't technically our cats because they were. We lived on a ranch. I had a cow cats. named Range Cube. Range Cube was my cow that I never got the money for and my dad sold it. I'm still bitter about it. I suppose that was my cow and that was the rules. Like you sell one of our cows, we're supposed to, the kids are supposed to get the money because of mine. Right. Because he had a buttload of cows. How much did he sell it for? I have no idea. A couple hundred dollars? Four, five, six, seven, eight, hundred, nine hundred dollars? I don't know. <laughs> a long time ago. Four thousand dollars and he Cube never was, paid me. Range Cube was my cow. Yeah, Range Cube. Why'd you Range, call it Range I don't Cube? remember because I thought what we fed them, I guess. Range cubes. That was my cow. Uh, we had a horse, Benita. She wasn't mine, though. She was my sister's. Yeah, we had two, I can't we remember. Had two horses, but they weren't ours. They were the Murkison. We had a collie that I remember. I cannot remember its name, but we had a collie. Mm -hmm. um, I vividly remember. Oh, battery. Dang it. I don't know if I have a charged battery. We had a lot of animals on the farm. I don't remember all their names. Um, nice. When I was in high school, though, I had a cat named Onyx. Oh, yeah, Onyx. And uh, I remember her. She was, when I went off to college when I was a freshman, she was my cat. I had her. And then at some point, I had to give her to my sister. Because I was allergic. You were allergic to cats. But I was also, like, in my apartment. I couldn't, for whatever reason, I couldn't keep her. Because wherever we were at or the rules of apartments or something. Okay. And my sister ended up having her for like another 12 years or something like that. So mm -hmm. so when I would go to my sister's house, I'd say, oh, it's Onyx. I mean, she wasn't really my cat anymore because yeah. she, you know, was my sister's. But And that was the last pet that I had before you and I got married. Yeah. And of course, I remember all of the pets since we've been together. Mm -hmm. It hasn't, been, hasn't many. been very many. It's been super easy. But yeah. And we still have the majority of the ones that we've had since we're together. The only one we don't have they is, won't die. The only one we had, we don't have is Stony, <laughs> and then the one we gave my my stepmom, so we gave her away real quick. Yeah, just because my stepmom. And she's already passed. Her. Yeah, she's passed away last year. But anyways, <gasps> you're bringing up all the emotions, uh, just fun guitar. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about my pets. <laughs> we have a herd of them at home now, so. Mm -hmm. We better get on to it because I don't know how long this battery is going to last. All right. uh, <laughs> Colin James, next question. Happy belated anniversary, guys. Question for next time. What do you think makes a better movie marathon? Lord of the Rings or the Indiana Jones movies? Ooh. Uh, I say Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I didn't. I guess I didn't hear you when you asked me before. Marathon, movie marathon. Uh, I really really have to be in the mood for Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Like uh, Christmas time? Yeah. And even then, it's like, do I really want to watch all the Gollum scenes? Gollum? Gollum. Yeah. Um, what did you think I said? I thought you, whatever makes a series, I think I, I, that's what she sounds like. Well, Lord of the Rings is the better series, but Which marathon is a wise. better marathon. But Indiana Jones is so funny. It's so lighthearted. And funny. Yeah, well, three of them. Well, I wouldn't watch Crystal Skull. Like, yeah. that's dead to me. That's that, wrong and stupid. That doesn't even exist. I forget that it Last even Crusade doesn't was exist. good. Yes, I can watch The Last Crusade over and over and over and over. Like, back to back. Touch Jones, come your heart. Yes. You named the dog. You named after the dog. Yeah, I love. Yeah. 
Mm, um, that's a tough one. Yeah, so... I, we, we've yeah. watched Lord of the Rings a lot more often I can than watch, we've watched Indiana Jones, though. Not, a, not well... Mm. What? Which one have you watched more of? Well, since, like, since Lord of the Rings has been out, yes. But, like, growing up, we watched Indiana Jones all the time yeah. as much as we watched Star Wars. Like, it was all the time. Yeah, but since Lord of the Rings, which yeah. one have we watched the most? Mm. Lord of the Rings. You have watched Lord of the Rings. I'll pop on Indiana Jones and Last Crusade mm-hmm. like all the time. Mm-hmm. So it's a draw. I say Lord of the Rings. She says Indiana Jones. Yes, because I can watch like Raiders of the Lost Ark and even Temple of Doom. Mm-hmm. Like, all the- I like Last Crusade the most, I think. Yes, because Maybe. Sean Connery. Sean Connery is hilarious. He's, He's the great. best. Yeah. Which one do you guys think? And gals think is the best. Y'all comment down below. Which mm. which one do y'all think? We'll take a poll. <laughs> we'll have a vote. Who thinks Lord of the Rings is a better marathon, marathon than Indiana Jones? Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> uh, great question, Colin. Thanks, man. Mm-hmm. Next question, Robert Hodges. Congratulations on 20 years. Whoop. Got a simple question for you. What are your two hashtags? Hashtag KTMA. Kid tested mother approved, question mark. Hashtag love the lollies, question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> Thanks and keep up the great videos. Well, uh, the hashtag KTMA is keep the music alive. Yes, because that's his sign off. That's one of our little catchphrase sign off. Keep it classy San Diego or stay classy San Diego. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's for keep <clears throat> the music alive, which I someone else came up with it. One of our viewers, I couldn't even tell you who, but it's been a while now, said, yeah. hashtag KTMA, keep the music alive. Yeah. Uh, and then, actually, it was another viewer, hashtag love the lollies. Mm-hmm. That one's pretty self-explanatory. Like, people love us because we're amazing. Well, I don't, I don't think he knows that we're lollies. Oh, hashtag love the lollies. See, maybe yeah. he thinks our last name is something different than what it is. Yeah. <laughs> because of somebody's mm. clerical error. Mm-hmm. Mm, man. So, our, <laughs> our last name is Lolly. L-A-D-W-L-E-Y. And someone else did that. Someone else had... That was some... One of our viewers... Mm-hmm. One of y'all has been typing a hashtag love the lollies. I was like, that's a cool hashtag. I like that. Yeah. So that's in the description of our video somewhere. I stuck those two at the very bottom of the description. If you go down way bottom in the description, it'll say hashtag KTMA, hashtag love the lollies. Because <laughs> we're the lollies. And people love us, apparently. Some people hate us. Or at least don't like us. I don't care. That has come up, but <laughs> screw those people. <laughs> screw them. Get it, hobby. Yeah. If you love us, great. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate you very much. So there you go, Robert. That's what our hashtags mean or how they came about. Appreciate yeah. it. Uh, next question Carlos Lamas. Happy anniversary. Happy for you guys. Yo. Since you guys carry. EMGs, the 5760, I think he meant to say 66, is that. Uh, the 5766 interests me. I like the sound of Alnico 2 pickups for classic rock. Do they fit that genre well? Which pedals do you think are the most essential, if any? Hashtag KTMA. Hashtag Big Guns, Angela. She's got the guns, y'all. Mm-hmm. Guns are sore today. Yeah, mine are too. Been lifting weights. Been lifting some weights. Swole o'clock up here. Mm-hmm. Swole o'clock at RNA Music. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the 5766 are great for like classic rock stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've put those in all of our CMG RNA Custom Limited Edition guitars, and I just got a set in for myself from EMG. And you know, I've used the headset, which I really like. But uh, I've really been enjoying the 5766. I think they're great. They cover a lot of range, um, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, for sure, classic rock, you can do that. Uh, as far as which pedals do I think are most essential, if any, um, for sure essential is a tuner. <laughs> I have a tuner pedal on my pedal board. Actually, I actually have two pedal boards. I got a little compact mobile one I carry around, and mm-hmm. I have the one that stays here. They both have a tuner on them. Mm-hmm. And after that, it's probably a good overdrive and a reverb. Mm. I guess to have me some I reverb. That. I guess to have me some reverb. Now, right now, I'm playing a Devil Cat that has built in reverb, so I don't necessarily <laughs> need a pedal. Mm-hmm. Re- which I do have my pedal reverb plugged in because I double the reverb. But um, like my Mesa does not have built in reverb, and I'm like, I need the reverb. Uh, well, so probably. 
a tuner and reverb because like the Mesa has channel switching, right? So it can do clean and dirty. If, if you got a dual channel amp, that's what I'm gonna say. Okay. You guys, tell me what do y'all think is the most essential pedal? What's the must have pedal that you guys have to have? Thanks man, appreciate it. Hashtag Angela has big guns, she does. I gotta start, I gotta lift heavier. <laughs> Next question, Paul Guitars. Congratulations on 20 years. Obviously, you two are the best couple on the internet with a fun channel. Well, thank you. Thanks Very so kind much. of you. I'm not going to argue. Yes, Les Paul is the most iconic and coolest guitar for metal and rock, or whatever it's called today. Les Pauls are the Fonzie of all guitars. <laughs> truth remains truth, whether the man accepts it or not. Here's the truth. Jimmy Page, Joe Perry, Neil Sean, Peter Frampton, Rick Derringer, Gary Richarth, Randy Rhodes, Steve Clark, Slash, are just a few of the men whom we can't deny were just cool on stage. The real question is, did these men make the Les Paul cool, or did the Les Paul make them cool? Ooh, Ooh good question. Mm. All these huge rock stars make the Les Paul cool, or did the Les Paul make them cool? Mm. I don't you know, know, I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's a little bit of both, honestly. I think quite a few of those guys had some swagger to them. Yeah. Anyways. I, I think... Their own style and stuff. I'm going to lean a little bit toward 70% they made the Les Paul cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because by good. the time Slash came out, there were a lot of cool guitars already, but... Man, he definitely helped Gibson sell some guitars. Slash. Faux show. True. Faux show. Uh, Zach Wilde. Also, <laughs> big Les Paul guy. Um, I, you know, I'm gonna lean a little bit more to those players made that guitar cool. Yeah. It's a cool guitar, but it's hard to separate. Why do people buy Les Pauls? We buy them because our heroes played them. You right. know, right? I, I think because you like the way they made the guitar sound with yeah. the songs that they played. Because there are guitars that are more ergonomical, more comfortable, more balanced, more better upper fret access, all that kind of stuff. But we still want the Les Pauls. I think it has a lot to do with, with our heroes played them. And with, that's our connection to them and that mm. music. That's what I think. You guys, you guys below, let us know. What do you think? Yeah. What do you think? I agree. All right. It's mostly the, the players making the guitar cool. I think so. Mm-hmm. Uh, next question, Terry Starks. Do y'all still have any heritage guitars? I heard Ike uh, announced he was diving into Captain Crunch. <laughs> the Captain Crunch of guitars and becoming a Fender dealer. Do y'all have any new lines you are closely looking at to expand the shop? Hashtag Meanie Meanie and KT May. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of you guys are watching the video to the end and catching our secret hashtag of the day which grants you legendary status. Legend, wait for it, dairy yes. status. Um, yeah, uh, what was the question? Oh, do we have any heritage? No, we don't have any heritage guitars. Mm -hmm. We answered this several videos back. Uh, we yeah. had them for a brief period. It was like a test drive. We had like six months to figure out whether we wanted to keep them or they were going to work for us or not. Mm -hmm. And so we did, we had an arrangement with Heritage. They were very nice, very cool people. Appreciate nice. them very much. But at the end of the six months, we, like them. we didn't really get the response from the public that we were hoping for sales wise. And so we were able to send the guitars back to Heritage. No harm, no foul, no hard feelings. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we, we gave it a shot. Nobody wanted to buy any. So I was like, well, all right. I appreciate them working with us, and you know, mm -hmm. I think they appreciate us working with them, giving them an opportunity to, to be in a region where they weren't really exposed to the mm -hmm. public very much. Um, but unfortunately, we just didn't get the sales, and that was that. Mm -hmm. uh, I do appreciate them, though. We we're talking about companies earlier, and uh, you know, they were they were, great. They were 100 percent honest. They and they approached us with like, hey, we'd like you guys to carry our stuff. Here's the buy-in price, and it was like, ah. Thanks, man, but uh, I think the guitars are great, but we don't have that kind of scratch at the moment. We've already <laughs> shelled out a crap load of money before for other guitars, and, and so I'm a little, I don't know, man. And they're like, well, what if we did this? 
And they came up with a solution that was a win-win opportunity. They had their guitars in a new place. Um, we were able to see what the response would be without a lot of capital outlay. We did it. They were cool. They honored their word. Mm -hmm. They were honest. They did exactly what they said they would do. It was great. So no uh, complaints there, but nope, we, we don't carry them at the moment. Um, new lines we're looking at closely to expand at the shop. Well, battery's about to die again. Fantastic. If it dies, it dies. Angela, we were just talking about this. I was just talking to Angela about this a couple of days ago that at the moment, I'm really not looking to bring on another line mm -hmm. at the moment specifically. What I am interested in doing is taking some capital and expanding a little bit deeper with some of the brands we already carry. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause right now I'm really satisfied with the brands we carry um, and the people that we deal with. Uh, like. CMG, obviously, I have a great relationship with Chris and Ashley and uh, Lane at Devil Cat and CMG, and you know I really appreciate them. Problem with CMG is the demand is so high and the build time is backed up so much, it's hard to get a lot of CMGs in at once. We kind of have a standing open build slot like every couple of months that is ours, and we get to have that build spot. But you know I would really, if I could, get more CMGs in at once, I would love to do that. So far, uh, Vola and Acacia are our newer lines that we've started carrying in the past couple of years, and they've been great to work with. Like, I'm really happy with the guys um, and how they've treated us, mm -hmm. and they've treated us with respect, and they've created situations and opportunities that were a win win. It was a win for their brand, it was a win for our store to kind of partner together. Mm -hmm. um, so I really appreciate them, and I would like to bring on more of their guitars in stock. Because mm -hmm. they're not real well known, they're smaller, younger companies. But so far, things have been great. Right. And so I would like to, if I'm gonna go deeper with a, a company, I would like to go with these ones that I have a good feeling about, yep. and they have, they've been great to work with so far. So I don't really want to bring on anything new. And Schecter, of course, Schecter's been great. I love Schecter. I, I can't see us parting ways with them anytime soon. I'd like to bring on more Schecters. But uh, yeah, mostly just go a little bit deeper stocking-wise with companies we already carry. So yeah, that's what I think about that. We were just talking about this a couple days ago. Yeah. I think. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't know how much longer this battery's going to last. Maybe longer than we, maybe longer than I think. I don't know. Uh, we're almost done though. Next question. Jim Grew, mm -hmm. happy anniversary. Did you watch the Flintstones? Love your videos. Keep them coming. Hashtag KTMA. <laughs> uh -huh. Did we watch the Flintstones? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Definitely watched them as a kid. All the time. Yeah. Wasn't my favorite cartoon. Same thing song. But awesome. I did watch it. Flintstones. Meet the Flintstones. That's definitely our age. There are modern stories, family. <laughs> yeah, when we were kids. The town of Bedrock, there are places where that history. I didn't like the movie, though. The live action movie. I liked the first one. I didn't really care for it. I did. But I did watch it. And the Jetsons. It was Flintstones and then the Jetsons. Yes. I liked all the, you know, Droopy Dog and... Hanna-Barbera. Like Hanna-Barbera? Yeah. All of, all of them. All of it. All old school stuff. <laughs> we loved, sure did. Loved. Still do. Can still watch it. It's great stuff. Yeah. Love uh, Flintstones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. True story. <laughs> yes. Yes. So yeah, There's we're big answer. TV people. Or yeah. I am. I was as a kid. So I was too as a kid. Loved it. Was not allowed to watch Scooby Doo, but still watched it. On the DL. Yeah. Was not allowed to watch a lot of stuff, but still watched it. You snuck it in <laughs> as a rebellious eight-year-old. Yes. Angela, you chose Loved me. it. But um, that was one of the shows, because my parents watched it. Or my mom watched it, The Flintstones, when she was mm -hmm. younger. So it was one of the things that it was mom approved. <laughs> mom approved. Cartoon. Dinosaurs. Yes. <laughs> so. Thanks for the question, Jim. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. Good one. Final question. Final question. Hank Rotz. Guitar. Mm -hmm. That was Hank Rott's project. Maybe it's Hank Ooh, Rott's guitar. Now. He has two pages. Did Angel check out Glenn Hansard yet? 
-hmm. curious on what she thought. She is an angel, yeah, I think. Yeah. You're, you're angelic, mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. um, question for next week. What do you, you get yourself... What do you do to get yourself out of a funk? Mm. I've always... I've got songs, but can't seem to write lyrics. I cannot read today. I should put on my glasses. Probably. <laughs> Question for next week. What do you do to get yourself out of a funk? I've got songs, but can't seem to write lyrics. Okay. <clears throat> so twofold question here. Mm -hmm. Angela, did you check out Glenn Hansard yet? Yes. Yes. What did you think? I Yes, I know who he is. I thought I didn't, but I did. I just... You knew his songs. I knew his songs. Just yes. not his name. Just didn't know who did it. But okay. yeah, I like, I like his voice. He has a very nice, very nice voice. So... He'll be, he should be on my circulation of artist mm -hmm. to listen to. I even recognize he had that one real big hit song. Yeah. Falling Slowly. Mm -hmm. Is that what it was? Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember this song. Yeah. I've had, I think I've had a student I taught it to or something. I'm like, yeah, oh. I think so. There you go. That reminds me. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to remember what if we did that in a recital. I don't think we did a I don't recital. We never recital, but I had a student that we, I, I taught the guitar it. part to. Mm -hmm. I can't remember which student now. It's been a yeah. while. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do? Get what do you do to get yourself out of a funk? Play that funky music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've got songs, but can't seem to write lyrics. I wonder, are you talking about like a songwriting funk? Probably. A, a, kind of what it seems like. <clears throat> got songs, but can't seem to write lyrics. Yeah. What do you think? Well, I'm not a songwriter, like lyricist, but I write. So um, what I usually do to get myself out of a funk is I watch creative things. If I'm trying to be creative, I usually go and watch people being creative. Um, I watch like HGTV or I watch um, YouTube videos on how to's or I go on Pinterest and I look up you know, things that inspire me. I usually go and spend time looking at quotations of inspirational quotes from people who I admire, or I look at photos of art, you know, or stuff like that. I'll just sit there and scroll and look at beautiful art or just little things like whatever puts me in that mindset of, oh yeah, you have this, you have something inside of you and you just need to get it out and you need to express it. And it's hard sometimes for me to articulate in writing what I have in my head. I'm, I'm a pretty good speaker, even though I, I trip over my words just like anybody, but um, I, I can um, communicate pretty well when I'm talking verbally, mm -hmm. but getting my words onto paper, as soon as I start to think in paper writing mode, I, my body and my brain completely shuts down. So, I usually like um, sometimes I'll doodle on a pic, you know, just write things like write quotes or things about myself, you know, like, you know, you are strong or you are smart or I'll start to journal something and get those thoughts out of my head just to kind of get my body in the motion of writing. And then it just starts like, oh, yeah, I have I remember that thought I had a couple weeks ago and I wanted to expound on it. So I write that thought down like it'll come to mind and and i'll write it down and i have like notebooks everywhere <laughs> true story in the house and books and stuff everywhere so wherever i'm sitting where i normally sit at my at the on my side of the bed on the couch in the big chair in the front room wherever i'm at i usually have something where i can write something down in my purse my bag backpack even in my lesson room over here i have notebooks and i'll sit there and write stuff down so when things come to mind, if you think it, you ink it. If you if it comes in your brain, you put it immediately down on paper because you never know what will trigger a moment of inspiration that can flow out into something very meaningful and purposeful that someone needs to hear. So that's what I usually do. I surround myself with very creative things, creative people. I listen to creative people talk, and that usually, usually just immediately triggers something i get my best paintings out of being around um cre watching creative people not even just paint people painting sometimes that discourages me because then i think i compare myself and i think i'm not that good yeah. i'm not gonna paint so i get usually look at something that's completely opposite 
but still creative. Um, if I want to paint, sometimes I'll, I'll look at, um, you know, uh, I'll listen to like my favorite singer or I'll go and like put on some music that I really enjoy. And that usually just totally puts me in the mood to, to, um, express myself through paint, um, or whatever. So that's usually how I get out of the funk, which here lately, because I'm supposed to be writing, that's my purpose for this year. Um, but I have this like block in my mind, like I'm not good enough or who would want to listen to me. So You're I, super good. <laughs> you know, it's that goes back to that obstacle thing where you've had so many people not cheer you on that it's hard to even imagine yourself good enough. So because of other people, because of other people, other people planted that idea. In and our so heads. I have to get over those obstacles. And a lot of times that's what it is. It's just this obstacle of thinking that you're not good enough. But everybody, I tell my girls this all the time, the girls in my Bible study, I'm like, you have a story to tell. You lived a life and have overcome something that someone needs to hear how to overcome. You have something inside of you, a, a piece of beauty inside of you that someone needs to see. And if you um, just write things down, how you're feeling, how you see things in the world around you, just start writing it down and expressing it out just like you would want somebody to describe it to you or you're describing it to a child or you're describing it to a friend, something about love or loss or, you know, hope or anger or whatever it is. Um, people need to hear that. People need to hear that expression and the best songs, the best art, the best dance, the best anything artistic has been rooted in something out of an experience someone had of life so that's what I that's what I encourage you to do yeah great advice yeah. so if you're struggling with writing lyrics maybe go look at some beautiful artwork mm-hmm maybe something like something not in that um, mm -hmm. that's good advice Aww. yeah you're super good you need to write <laughs> well I told my one of, actually one of my vocal students she wants to learn how to write songs and I wasn't going to blow her off because she's, she's really young, and um, I'm like, okay, we really need to get to work on your singing, but uh, I'm you like, you know what, voice stream, but, you know. this is something that's important to you, and I'm going to take the time to help you with this, and she was like, I just don't know where to start. It's so overwhelming. I'm like, well, what do you love in life? She was like, well, I love art. And I was like, well, write about it. Write about how it makes you feel. What is your favorite painting? And she told me what her favorite painting is. And I said, okay, now describe it to me. Now, how did it, how did that make you feel? Now write those words down, you know, write, mm. write it down and start saying, you know, talking about it, expressing yourself about it. And, um, we had like a whole verse and part of a chorus down. I was like, actually, this is pretty good. Right. <laughs> and when I, we were done, she was like, that's it. I'm like, well, honestly, yeah, that pretty much is. And we went through all the songs that we've, sung and I like listen to what they're saying I'm like it doesn't sound that hard to come up with sentences like this but we turned it into something that's so hard and so, so nerve-wracking because we turned it into something like you're the, the hallelujah chorus or you're trying to write you know bohemian rhapsody oh, or you know like you're trying to write something that's so ridiculous one-off thing when you should just write about you know seeing someone's face like the first time ever I saw your face, you know, this just describing a moment that happened in their life that just took their breath away. So, yeah, um, I understand Hank what you're going through because I, I write music and music for me tends to come fairly easily or at least riffs like, Hey, I got this cool riff. I really dig it. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, I've struggled a lot, and I think part of it is is that we're talking about this. Get, you, there's a subconscious block in there of like, I'm not really that good. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm really not. I'm fooling myself, and I maybe I've fooled some other people, but I'm really just not that great. Right. Which is a lie, you know, that we plant there, and like I just, you know, I'm not. I can't do this, right? But then like, but you have the super strong desire deep down, like, but I want to. This is what I want to do is I want to write some music and I want to write a song that, you know, moves somebody mm -hmm. the way my favorite song moves me, you right. know, that connects with people emotionally, right? So, but you get these blocks, these mental blocks. 
And for me, I've struggled a bit lately. I have this EP that I've been working on for like seven years or so, or longer. I don't know. I read these songs and I just haven't finished them. Mm -hmm. It's like 60% done or 70% done. But I'm like, I'll sit back and think like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to connect these parts together. I don't know. But what if it's not any good? What if people hate it? You know, or like, mm -hmm. I think it's cool, but maybe it's not. You know? um, but I, the music part comes easier to me also than the lyrics do and I, and I seem to sort of like struggle with that then I which I think is totally stupid because you sit down I was trying to think of like what's one of my favorite songs right mm -hmm. but what you should do is like make a list of your 10 favorite songs should be pretty easy to, or not even your favorite just 10 songs you really like right it doesn't have to be your top 10 favorites just 10 right. songs you really dig right mm -hmm. go to the internet print off the lyrics to those songs on black and white paper and pull it up don't listen to it Look at it in black and white on and paper read and read it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, you'll be surprised. That like, we, we've made it way more complicated than it really is. <laughs> and when you sit down and like look at a song and go, let me just read uh, these lyrics, right? And it's like, that's not that deep. It's like Stairway to Heaven. Yeah. You're like, yeah, it make no sense, what? Stairway to Heaven. What are you... What are you saying? Barracuda is the same way. Yeah. I'm like, sorry, battery finally died. Uh, so, for example, Just there's a, there's a sign on the wall, but she wants to be sure, because you know sometimes words have two meanings. In a tree by the brook, there's a songbird who sings. Sometimes all of our thoughts are misgiving. Like, okay, that doesn't even rhyme. <laughs> It doesn't have to. I mean, it can rhyme. Lyrics right. can rhyme. Stanzas and ends of phrases. And we think that, well, I gotta make this rhyme. We're like, well, no, you don't. You don't have to. You know, it's if you just sit down and read them, if you can separate the melody in your head and just read the lyrics. Right. Now, yeah, I mean, you might look like, how many lines are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How does it fit musically? But you can make it fit however you want, you know? That's just an example. Uh, you know, take take yeah. any song. What what's this? What? This one, um, fight song. Mm -hmm. This is my fight song. Take back my life song. Prove I'm all right song. My power's turned on. Start right. I'll be strong. I'll play my fight song. That one kind of rhymes a lot, but because you just use the same word over and over and over and over and over and over. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's, and that's with everything you, we try to make things into a lot harder and because we see it, we you think you gotta we be measure it Hemingway. With, right. We measure it with success. We measure what we're trying to write with the success of others. And you can't do that because like we've, you can pull up any song lyric and it's like, what are you saying? What? I don't understand, but it's so catchy, and I'm singing it, so yeah. there's that. Um, it's just an expression of what they were feeling, and they just were like, write it down. And it fit that beat, and let's just keep on going. Who cares? What can I, what can I, what was it we were laughing about? Um, Jesse's girl. I'm like, Jesse's what was it? girl. <laughs> no, what was the word that he used? Speedlunking. <laughs> no, there was the word that was like, who... Was like okay, we have to find There's out a, a word that rhymes with. I can't even remember what the word is oh, now. We've talked about this a million times. It is hilarious. Jesse is a friend, yeah. I know he's been a good friend of mine, but lately something's changed. That ain't hard to define. Jesse's got himself a girl, and I want to make her mine. Yeah, but what is what is that yeah. lyric? Moot. 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 Yes. Cute. You know, I feel and so dirty when they start talking cute. Moot. I want to tell her that I love her, but the point's probably moot. Moot. Who says moot in a song? <laughs> you know, so it's like, if you look at all these songs and you start to, you know, first of all, you realize that I could do that. I can. You're no different than them. Yeah. Um, but it's that getting past this and... You know, finding what really truly inspires you.
Yeah. Not just for the sake of writing something down. Not for the sake of saying, you know, I just want to do it. Um, it has to be something that really inspires you. Most of the people who we know that are popular, who we've, you know, grown up with, who are just, um, have become icons in the music industry, no matter what genre you pull from, we can name somebody, uh, probably 10 somebodies in each genre that have, can, that stand out to the whole entire world, that mm. cross borders of everybody. You know, they did it because it was their passion. It was something that inspired them and they were like, I'm going to do this. So you find something, when you find something that is, that strikes that within you, that you know that I'm going to do this. This is something that I need to do. You, you pull from that passion. You pull from that heart of, I want to inspire somebody. I want somebody to sing my lyrics. I want somebody to be dancing, you know, to my song. Or I want somebody to, whenever they break up with their, their person, girl or guy, you know, they play my song to feel better. Or they play my song to just get, you know, just get ticked or whatever it's like whatever it is you know that that part of you needs to be expressed so you just go with it write stuff down think of how you felt um surround like i say surround yourself with creativity because whenever you're in a room of creative people that's why a lot of um advertisement you know companies companies that are built on advertisement they get all these creative people together and they have them do creative things some people have them work with play-doh they just have them do odd creative things to get that juice going and then it triggers something where they think of something that they forgot or they a new thought pops in their head of course there's nothing new under the sun but you know a new yeah. to them thought pops in their head and it just get gets it going and you write down the thoughts. I mean, you're gonna have papers and you can see from, I think that they have a few um, music pages from artists from over the years of their actual writing of their actual song. I think they have a few, you can go look at Beatles and and like, um, I can't think of their names now, but anyways, it doesn't matter. But you, how they wrote stuff and they wrote off to the side and they scribbled it and they inserted stuff and they wrote it again and they scribbled it and they're like, oh wow, this is the original, you know, look at, look at all the process that it went through to get, yeah. get there. Um, but go ahead, like, like I said, if you think it, you ink it. Mm -hmm. And you, you just trash out the things that you want. Keep, you never know what's gonna keep, trigger, like, yeah. I like this line, or you might come up like, you, you might write a line and that actually sparks another idea. Mm -hmm. I think that's why there's so many songs where it's like, the, like the verse is like, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So it's like, well, they said something and it just sparked something else that came out like, oh, I like the way that line flows. <laughs> right. I've done that many times where I've, well, for instance, um, I was, I'm writing, I put it on extreme pause right now, <clears throat> a children's book about our boys. And I started writing it and like I had this whole thing. It was so great. And then I was, uh, as I was writing like chapter two, basically, I started realizing, I'm like, wait a second, this doesn't really make sense in the timeline. This seems like they're a lot older now. And so I copied all of that. Oh my gosh, it was like three pages worth of writing that I wrote and I put it in a whole nother document for book two. So I had like a whole chapter for book one and like a whole other chapter, no telling where it'll fit for mm -hmm. book two. Um, but I had that thought and it just started flowing. So I was just like, oh wow, this is really good. I, you know, I can totally see them doing this and this would be so much fun. And I can hear the, them talking to one another and all this stuff. And I'm like, the dialogue just didn't fit. So I had to scrap it. Well, I didn't completely scrap, scrap it. it. Just put it on I shelf. I put it on another side. Um, I've done that with, um, even writing out sermons and stuff like that, I'm like, oh, that was a good thought. But that doesn't necessarily pertain to my train of thought that I'm trying to get. I just have a lot coming out of me right now because I'm in that moment. So I will take it something and sit it over there to the side. And I'm like, I can expound on that and make that a whole nother sermon and make that another sermon and make this another sermon. And look, I had like six sermons <laughs> yeah, out of this one thing. Nuggets. Yeah. 
out of it. So I think I was just saying like when the battery was dead, I was like, oh, yeah. I think it doesn't. We overthink the lyrics. I don't think they're as important as we think they are. I think it's the delivery of the lyrics. It's how you sing them, how you deliver them, yeah. the emotion you put behind the delivery yes. of the lyrics. You know, ice, ho ice, baby. hopefully you're on pitch. You know, ho hopefully you know the rhythm of the lyrics, how it flows, Sweet the, the melody, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> but I think it's not the words themselves are just a part of it. It's the delivery of them. Yes. You know, so don't don't over. Don't overthink it too much. If you overthink it, you'll never finish it. Right. Which is my problem. So I'm like, it's like, all right, fine. I was Just like, get it out there. Yeah. Like I have a song I've been working on. And I'm like, okay, I've got sort of the A B section. It's like, I need a bridge. I really have no idea what to do here. I was like, probably should be clean though. So I was like, I just came up with a chord progression that was in the key of. Mm -hmm. Not this morning. I played it for. I was like, what do you think about that transition? Is that okay or is it weird or what? She's like, no, that sounds good. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, great. <laughs> Probably want to keep it then, instead of just rehashing, rehashing, rehashing. Over and over and over. Of course, you'll never finish, right? Right. And at some point, just put it out there. Mm -hmm. Just do it. It'll be you fine. You never know. It'll be fine. And every, everything is a learning experience. It is. And you talk to like famous musicians who like they think back to their first records that we think are like this record changed my life. Yeah. It's like, the greatest thing ever. They're like that was terrible. My drum sound was ridiculous. I hated it. That. My guitar was crap. I hated the way it sounded. And we're like, right. what? But it's like the holy grail for us. We're like, oh, right. he hated that. Right. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, then. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's just a journey and a process. Yep. Just enjoy it, man. Anyways, I hope that answered your question. I enjoyed that question. Yeah, I did. I enjoyed the conversation. I've been, I've been thinking about that a lot lately. That mm -hmm. specific thing. And, and me and Paul have been talking about that, too. Paul's on a lyrical roll, you know, he's writing lyrics for his stuff. And I'm like, mm -hmm. just put it out there. It's fine. You just got to deliver it. Just deliver it. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Find out. Great tips. Great answers, Angela. Of you're course. amazing as always. <laughs> as always. All right. And that's all the questions for this week. Who knows how long this one is? I don't even know. I don't know. even know. I keep saying we're going to make these shorter so it make my life easier on editing. But hey. Yes. We do it for y'all. What's the secret hashtag of the day? Secret hashtag of the day. What's your cow's name? Range Cube. There. Hashtag Range Cube. Hashtag Range Cube. If you made it to the end of this RNA music video, Ask RNA with Ryan and Angela, hashtag Range Cube. Type that below and you will achieve a legendary status. Legend. Mm -hmm. Dairy status. I hope you're not lactose intolerant. In, In my eyes. In my eyes. Yeah. It's yes. alright. Yeah. Hashtag Range Cube. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In honor of my cow that was stolen from me by my father. I'm going to write a song about Range Cube. There you Good go. Shit. That'd be a great... It's going to be like a, a cowboy western, hard rock western cowboy song. Yes. On a steel horse I ride. Your song, first song should be Don't Fence Me In. Yeah. Don't sell my cow. Don't sell my cow. I want my money. I want my money. <laughs> I want my... Oh, uh, rustlers. I'm going to call it rustlers. There you go. Dirty rustlers. Yeah. Dirty rustlers. <laughs> Hashtag Rain Cube. You will be a legend if you type that below. Yes. We'll put it <laughs> right you, here. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to type it up there. They got to be listening. Got to be listening. Maybe I will. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you guys so much. Like right here. Like, please. <laughs> please ask your question for next week. Below in the comments. I'm losing my voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you for all the kind words and comments. I try to go through it. At least heart them all. If not respond. But thank you mm -hmm. so much. Uh, we will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm. Until then, keep the music alive. Don't forget Hashtag it. Hashtag KTMA. Don't forget it. The music needs you. And you need the music. We need the music. We need to keep it alive for this next generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we need to write our own lyrics and write some music and just put it out there. Yes. Put it out there, guys. You can do it. Mm -hmm. I believe in you. And Angel believes in you. And you believe in. And you believe in you. That's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we'll see y'all in the next video. Bye. Hashtag range cube. <laughs> My morphin range cube. They're a modern stone age family.